juvenile elephant emerging from the dense forest has fallen victim to the cruel and indiscriminate trap gun. His front leg bears three ghastly wounds, which have over time degenerated into malignant abscesses. The knee joint of the injured leg is grossly swollen and fractured. The majestic pachyderm now walks with an unendurable strain, bearing the weight of his body on the other three limbs. A compassionate villager venturing into the woods chanced upon this incapacitated creature and promptly alerted the wildlife conservation office in the vicinity. The wildlife team swiftly arrived at the site to attend to the ailing elephant. After a cursory examination, the attending veterinarians deemed it necessary to sedate the animal, as approaching a young and injured wild elephant can be potentially hazardous. The animal is already in a perilous state of health. His wounds have become infected and have transformed into purulent abscesses. Moreover, the infection has progressed upwards in his leg, causing a drastic decline in his energy levels and immunity. In this weakened condition, foraging for food and water poses a grievous challenge. Hence, immediate and appropriate medical intervention is of utmost significance for this magnificent and innocent creature. To treat the pus oozing abscesses on the animal, the first step is to sedate the animal using a sedative drug prepared on site by the vets and administered through a tranquilizer gun. The dosage of the sedative drug is determined based on the animal's body size. It is important to wait until the animal is fully sedated before approaching it to avoid causing any harm. Once the animal is fully sedated, the vets proceeded with cleaning the abscess and administering the necessary treatment, such as antibiotics and multivitamins, intramuscularly. These medications will help to improve the process of wound healing and eliminate the infection that is spreading rapidly. It is important to monitor the animal during its healing process to prevent a recurrence in the afflicted area. The root of this predicament lies in an unusual and illegal firearm known as the trap gun. These crude firearms, commonly found in forest bordering villages, are smooth bore, long barreled and muzzle loading with a victim activated simple trigger mechanism. They are often made from metal pipes, explosives from firecrackers and other readily available chemicals and metal pellets, primarily intended to protect crops from smaller wild animals, like wild boars, without harming them. While their firing range capacity is low, they have a high propensity for causing accidental injury to unintended targets, such as this unfortunate elephant. It should be noted that if someone purposely shot the animal, it would have injured the body and not the lower limb. It is not only animals, but humans also fall victim to trap gun injuries, as these weapons are indiscriminate in whom they injure or kill. In the case of humans, victims are often alone in the middle of the jungle when the injury occurs making it impossible to walk and inevitably leading to bleeding. Due to the combination of factors such as the inability to walk, heavy bleeding and being too far away to call for help, victims suffer tremendously and can eventually bleed to death or require amputation. After administering the necessary medication, the next step is to clean the abscesses and treat the wounds. However, reaching the wounds of the sedated elephant was difficult as he was standing facing the forest. To prevent any danger, the officers roped the animal and turned him around to a position that was easy for everyone. The vets first examined the wounds and washed them with saline before thoroughly cleaning them with cotton swabs. The surrounding area of the wounds was yellowish and discharging pus, which indicated the active spread of infection. All the pus had to be drained before medicating the wounds. The biggest wound had caused the limb area to swell and freeze, making it difficult for the elephant to flex the joint. The swelling might not be able to be brought down, but the animal can be brought out of danger.
This is a moment to be grateful for these veterinarians and the officers for bearing all of the difficulties, tolerating the disgusting smells and sights of these pus gushing out of abscesses and doing a great job for the wild animals. After thoroughly cleaning the abscess wounds, the veterinarians used betadine and negocent powder to disinfect the area. They then applied an antibiotic spray to help prevent the spread of infection. That concluded the first treatment session. As for the first session of treatment, the veterinarians were able to successfully address the elephant's health concerns. It was fortunate that the elephant was seen by someone who acted quickly to seek veterinary care. Had the elephant gone untreated, the infection could have continued to spread and potentially led to tragic consequences. It is natural to wonder why the fragmented pieces of the abscess were not removed from the elephant's body. This elephant is a wild animal living in a forest. Facilities in this area are scarce. Therefore, veterinarians lack the necessary resources to conduct procedures on such large wild animals and provide aftercare. Given these limitations, the officer's treatment methods are optimal in saving the elephant's life and restoring its health to a point where it can survive independently. The veterinarians will perform several more rounds of comparable treatments until the elephant is healthy enough to fend for itself. While the abscesses did impede the elephant's movements, it was not in mortal danger. Nevertheless, consistent treatment will help the elephant return to its normal state. To conclude today's treatment, the revival drug is administered, and within a few minutes, the animal regains consciousness and ambles back towards the forest.